Uh, kia ora tato. Uh, welcome back, uh, everybody. And look, um, we now move through to the next part of the presentation, and this is around um, Schedule B. And I'll just go to our papers, just one moment. Yeah, so it's um, it's the late paper that came to us, um, and yeah. this is around the uh, one-off operating programs. Um, and just just note, please, there is a replacement schedule that was circulated as a late item, um, and it is around. Um, uh, proposed options for funding operating programs from the 2021-22 operating surplus, uh, um, entitled or uh, well, titled as sorry, schedule of one-off operating programs attachment five, schedule B. So I'll come to you, um, Cameron, if you want to uh, speak to this, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in, in our introductory, uh, introductory remarks uh, this, uh, this morning, uh, we mentioned that that it was, uh, given the environment that we are in, in order to try and give uh, give some relief, uh, for a better term, back back to uh, our residents who are uh, who are facing um, the effects of the valuation that we've already spoken about. One of the options in our toolkit. Is, is utilising um, this year's operating surplus to fund some one-off items. Now, the, uh, that is a deviation away from uh, from the uh, the policy of using operating surpluses to repay repay debt, but it is also a recognition that this year's program um, was impacted uh, reasonably um, significantly from from COVID-19. Um, lockdowns and restrictions. So, so um, had that not have happened, in many respects, we we would have spent more of our operating program. So, what we're trying to say here is, um, there is an option here to take some of that um, underspend and apply it to next year, as opposed to rating for these programs next year. Um, basically, we we sort of thought of. How could we do this in a way that doesn't create further burden um, in the year after? And that is why we've signalled out, uh, singled out those programmes that, that at this this stage only have a one-year um, lifespan. That they're, they're designed to be completed within the year and don't have an ongoing uh, requirement thereafter. That way, we're not caught in a situation where we have to. Um, uh, catch up on on rating for them next year. So that, that was a bit of the thinking and and parameters that we put around this. So uh, so in Schedule B um, in the uh, in the the late item that had identified just a little over one million dollars in, in a reduction to the rates um, income requirement for next year if we adopt this approach. Which, which is about roughly a percent of, of rates. So that, that was a way in which we could continue um, to deliver what we said we would deliver, but, uh, but in a way that wasn't adding extra burden to, to rate payers. I do need to highlight one item on that list that's just recently come to my attention. The urban bus terminal uh, redevelopment business case that is on the list is is at $50,519. That was net of Waka Kotahi funding. Uh, I've just been informed that we won't actually receive Waka Kotahi funding, which, which gave it a $100,000 um, uh, budget. And therefore, uh, for that to proceed, we would need to uh, consider it putting, increasing that budget. Or conversely, Making a decision about whether or not you wish to proceed in doing that business case at all. So, uh, the chief infrastructure officer can talk a little bit more to that when we come to it. But I have to highlight that, that that's a, 
uh, recent development that we've become aware of. All right. Does the infrastructure, acting infrastructure officer want to speak to that? Our lovely co-funding partners, Waka Kotahi. Uh, yes, Bryce Hosking, acting chief infrastructure officer. Uh, I will. Um, in addition to, to Cam's comments, so he's 100% correct, that was one of the programs that Waka Kotahi chose not to fund. Um, we have also got some recent information that the business case is going to come to $200,000. So in addition to topping up the extra 50 for the Waka Kotai funding, you'd also need to essentially add another $100,000 to that so we can actually deliver on a business case that has some concepts and actually be able to be used to inform a capital project. Um, or rightfully, as um, Cam has pointed out, conversely, you could choose to not fund it at all but anything less than $200,000 would not allow us to do what we need to do. So before we've just opened the Pandora's box with questions, um, can I just understand why are we doing a business case now for ourselves um, when the business case was really to attract, my understanding, um, a partner funding? So we're now doing a business case to inform ourselves that we're going to do this project. When it comes to doing the capital project, um, you know, there, there will be an opportunity to be seeking some funding at that point, but in order to get to that point so a decision could be made from the likes of Waka Katai, we're going to need to be doing a, the business case and some concepts and things to get it to that stage to be able to attract that funding. Okay, so they're not funding the business case, but it's not necessarily not funding the project? Not necessarily, no. Yeah, okay. All right, I'll open it up. Um, Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just wanted to clarify then around the residual um, $50,000 that would be released from Wakatahi if we were to pull the 50000 through in this way, would that residual be reassigned to um, co-fund other activity or is it actually lost to Council? Uh, no, there's no 50,000. They had made the decision in the funding round not to fund this, so that's already off the table. Ah, so, okay, right. Thank you. That clarifies further. Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question is likely either for Bryce or possibly for um, the Chief Planning Officer. I'm just wondering if we could have a comment in terms of where Horizons are at with their bus review, um, because most of the conversations to date, particularly around the bus terminal upgrade, have been around aligning it with um, with the work that Horizons have doing to try and have a little bit of synergy with timelines. I know that's it's not our work, but there there have been recent conversations. So I wondered if we could have a broad overview on how the timelines currently looking. Yeah, look, I've actually um, been a little bit removed from the more recent discussions on that. I, I will um, I'll check in with our senior transport planner, ASAP, and get an um, um, answer, unless Hamish um, has been in here. Okay. I, I guess just because my, my question would then be, what would the implications be if, we, if, if there was a decision to defer that? Um, Considering that we would essentially need to be funding a total amount of two hundred thousand, not fifty thousand, or defer it, really, are the, the two options. So just to make sure that we we have a full understanding of what the implications would be if we did defer a year. I, I guess a general comment I can make is is we have been trying to align the review of the bus service in the terminal as much as possible, and I know Horizons are advancing the review of their bus service. Um, um, the exact timing, I'd, I'd, as I said, I'd have to check. So I think the risk with deferring it is that we remove the ability for the, the review of the bus service and the terminal to occur um, alongside each other. I guess the other um, comment I would make is, is there's been a lot of talk about things that the council can or can't do to support investment in the old post office um, and providing some certainty to the public investment in that space 
will be um, an important part of trying to assist with resolving that issue. Thanks. David, just while you're standing, um, just with all the uncertainty about who's funding and you know partners not being partners, um, we could always bring, with some more certainty, because this is all on the fly, this conversation, because uh, I thought we were we were looking good with uh, Waka Kaitahi, especially with the uh, Deputy Prime Minister's announcements yesterday at uh, the budget luncheon um, about um, uh, public transport, that um, we could always bring this back into the chamber specifically, couldn't we, around knowing s for certain, because I don't know what we're funding and what we're doing. So if we got some surety from the officers um, of what we were doing and horizons were all aligned, we could always bring this back, couldn't we? If, if I could make a comment, Mr Mayor. Um, because this is included in the schedule that is to be funded um, by this year's operating surplus, it doesn't tr uh, trigger a rates funding requirement for next year, so that does give the opportunity to bring something back that that outlines the timelines and, and what's available. Yeah, but at it, it a significantly more expensive cost. Yes, so you could you could de uh, decide at that time whether you would like to further invest or or not. Okay. Um, Councillor Hancock. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mr Mayor. Uh, yeah, I was just probably just wanted to tease out and be really specific in terms of and David, this might be a uh, question for you. Just in terms of this business case, how integral is that to both the future transport needs of Palmerston North and also other commercial developments in that part of the city? Um, and if we delayed that, what are the impacts? Look, um, Hamish may want to um, contribute as well, but cer certainly from my perspective, um, you know, we've we've been, you know, we, we have we ho we hold some pretty bold aspirations for the, you know, um, you know, I guess change to our trans transportation system and and um, public transport is clearly a key part of that. Um, I was just talking to an officer at lunchtime about how you know the, the urban bus terminal has been talked about since two thousand and eight. Um, so, you know, ultimately the business case is, is important in terms of providing some direction around what we're going to do um, in terms of investment into that space. Um, without it, um, the uncertainty continues. As I said earlier, I, I think in terms of uh, certainty to private investment in the city centre, uh, then the business case uh, is important in that respect. Thanks. Um, back to you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, back to you, Cameron. So you've you've sort of given your your part around Schedule B. Okay, um, councillors. I know there's a couple of you want to add some other material in. So um, I would I would like to move Schedule B um, in its entirety, but I do want to ask a uh, well suggest a couple of things. Um, I'm, I'm not against the urban bus terminal, but the, the, the sand keeps shifting a bit um, and nobody can give us a clear answer of how much it's going to cost and actually what we're funding. Um, I'm very happy for it to come back to Council. Um, I do sit on the Regional Transport Committee. Um, I don't think a, a, a six months is going, or even a three months, of us making a clearer decision around the bus terminal. Uh, would would um, would rock would rock things too much because we are committed, but not at any cost. Um, I just feel this has got this is moving too much for us. Um, and the message I'm getting now it's in the 200 category. So um, let's get that confirmed and clarified and exactly what we're funding. So I would I would I'd be quite happy to move um, taking the health and safety program out. Or we probably need to have a look at that one first because uh, there's a couple of um, extra uh, motions around the health and safety program, um, and that is uh, program 2133. And also, I understand, Councillor Naylor, you'd like to move the disability 
into this, uh, the disability assessment um, into this as well. And Councillor Johnson, you would wanted to pull the water safety um, program into this as well. So uh, yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. So look, we'll, we'll, we'll perhaps we just look at program um, two one three three first, um, and this is around the health and safety improvement program that was proposed by officers for a million dollars. Um, and uh, Councillor Naylor has proposed this. I've seconded it. Um, around being delivered over th three years with um, 300,000 allocated in 2022-23, 323-24, and the final component in 24-25. Um, Councillor, I'll let you speak to this. Thank you. Um, look, um, colleagues, we're all uh, quite familiar with this programme that was um, initially proposed as being a one million program this year. Um, and considering the best way to address this, it's, I mean, it has been acknowledged um, by officers also that that's probably not realistic to even deliver. So looking at what a more realistic way of addressing the issues that um, have been highlighted, I think um, this is a better approach. I think so often we bite off more than we can chew and think that throwing a whole lot of money at something will solve it straight away. I think taking a measured and a more prudent approach um, is probably a sensible way to um, approach this. So 300,000 in the first year I think is a significant investment. I think health and safety is really important. And I think within the overall um, operational and remuneration budgets, there is capacity for the chief executive to ensure that it is maintained, a prior, the important things are prioritised. But this 300,000 that would be um, included in the budget is over and above any of the other additional um, extra remuneration um, budget. It was clarified during the uh, March de de uh, deliberations that this is over and above that. So I support the investment of 300,000 um, and then staging that over three years. Um, thank you, Councillor Naylor. C can I just ask a question of um, Cameron? If this first year of 300, could that be included in Schedule B if it was very obvious to everybody that year two and year three were, were, um, were rated? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the, uh, the intent behind Schedule B is, is to try and fund one-off items now. In this particular case, um, because you're, uh, you're deciding to s essentially spread the cost over a wider period, uh, I, think, I think you could make a decision to either put it in or leave it out of the schedule, but acknowledge that definitely the second and third year will need to be funded through rates. So it will create a commitment for rates funding uh, in those subsequent years. Okay, I'll just look to the mover whether she's prepared to do that. I'm comfortable um, for this year um, to, for it to be funded. I, I agree with the, the advice around the officers around this is a one-off time that we do this. I wouldn't usually support um, using a surplus in this way. But for this year, I think it is appropriate and I'd be comfortable for 300 to be included in there. I wouldn't be supportive of, of half a million. Right, and so we'd need to alter the um, recommendation there to say after in 24-25 um, and 23-24 um, from, from rates. Would that be correct? If that provides better clarity, I'm happy f for that yeah, to be included. I'm just, just trying to get some advice from the officers. Yeah. Uh, um, just to clarify, uh, and, and correct me if I've missed the question here, um, I, think, I think if we had the wording as such that... Um, that 300,000 is funded through Schedule B, but the 22-23 and 23-24, 23-24-25 um, uh, 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 years um, 
indicate that these are funded through rates um, in those years and create that commitment, then I think the recommendation would be... Okay, good. Thank you. Should it say funded through the 2021-22 surplus rather than Schedule B? Yes, you could, you, could, um, you could word it that way. It would be clearer for standing alone in, in later times. Right, okay. Okay, so we've got, just so for those um, online, um, it's now uh, Program 2133 Health and Safety Improvement Program. $1 million is delivered across three years with 300000 allocated in 22-23, funded through the 21-22 surplus, 300000 in 23-24 year and 400000 in 24-25 year funded through rates. Um, moved by Councillor Naylor, seconded by myself. All right, I'll open it up now um, to other comments. Um, uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can I ask a question first? Yes. Um, so, so I just want to clarify, um, Cam, so the way that this recommendation is now being worded, just want to clarify that there is now an additional $200,000 being put onto rates from what was originally proposed by staff, because your original recommendation was 500,000 for the one-off. Uh, yes. Um, so so 200,000 uh, in subsequent years will now come through rates? So I think if the intent is to reduce the program to 300,000 total for the year, we just need to make clear that the program is being reduced to 300,000 in, in this year and then and then the remainder through the subsequent years. Yeah, so in subsequent years we're putting an additional $200,000. Yep. In, in subsequent rates. years you are putting in three, uh, 300000 in the year after next and 400000 the year after is the way I read it. Yeah. Um, not on top of 300000 not, yeah, not, uh, not on top, basically. So you're saying the size of the program will be the million dollars, 300000 funded from the, the reserve of surplus next year, 300000 from rates the year after, and 400000 from rates the year after that. It's probably the appropriate question, I'm wondering whether the Chief Executive wants to comment on whether that uh, gives, su gives sufficient budget to achieve the actual program um, is probably a worthwhile consideration, uh, something I can't comment on myself. The work that needs to be done next year, there's, there's quite a bit of work um, and lots of little, I guess, pieces of framework looking to get things like competency assessments in place. So not only do we actually have our staff qualified to do things, but actually competent to be doing things. And there's a number of um, other little bits and pieces all around that sort of work, getting some framework in place so we can actually start to move our way forward. I, I guess the, the major concern at the moment, um, and there was a question that came up when this got discussed back in February around are we compliant? And I, I think the, the question is we don't entirely know. So there is still a little bit of uncertainty because we, we need to do this work to actually get our ship in order so we can start moving in the right direction. Um, by reducing this funding, it'll mean some of those work streams won't be able to be done and will get deferred. So some of that uncertainty will therefore get deferred um, before we can get to that space. Um, you know, it is a little bit fluid. There are some things we can be turning off if councillors do decide to reduce that, but it probably comes down to the speed and accuracy you want to get on how quickly you would like to know our position definitively. 
Can I just ask, because you've opened up, yeah, it's different advice to what we got from the uh, acting chief um, um, people officer a couple of weeks ago, uh, that nothing had been started and nothing had been scoped. So what are those pieces of work that you've just spoken about? I don't have a definitive list, but I, I, I can um, talk about a couple of things. Um, you know, I talked about health and safety framework, so that might be $100,000. Some of the competency work, uh, that's probably another $100,000. Competency around what, um, um, Bryce? Competency around um, being able to use our equipment. So for our operational staff, you know, it's all very well being trained in using a forklift or driving a truck, but are you actually competent at doing it so you can do it safely? Don't you get a licence to do that? You, you do. However, just because you have a licence to drive a car doesn't mean you can do so safely. The same thing, I guess, ultimately applies with some of these things. We have plenty of people who are, trade to, are trained to be using things like balers um, from a resilience standpoint, but in many cases they might not have actually used the baler in many, many years since they were trained. So there's a real piece of work um, around reducing some risk around keeping people competent. Um, there's some other work um, around some investigation time, uh, looking at things like um, basically how we could be... Um, let me get my thoughts here. There's quite a bit of work to be done around um, data accessibility and actually looking to tidy that up so we can be reporting. And we had something in the health and safety report yesterday um, around... Currently, some of our data that we have, we, we have very good, um, trans, um, I guess, transparent data around the work that we do operationally. However, there is also um, some work around how we can present some of the work from contractors to do that in a transparent way as well. Okay. All right. Um, now, um, where was I? Back to you, Deputy Mayor. Um, have they answered your questions? Yeah, yeah. sorry, my question's been answered. I, I'm just wondering, um, I think we are actually in comments now, aren't we? Yeah, 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 we are. Yeah, okay. We've moved on, yeah, definitely. Um, so... Um, sorry, Mr Mass, sorry. Um, but um, I have a question. I don't know if I've just been missed out, but before we move on to comments... Sorry, yeah, we, we had closed know. off, but that's fine. Um, well, I've been in the queue all this time. Mm, yeah. I okay. can jump back in for comment, yep, Mr. Mayor. Okay, um, where you go, Councillor Johnson. Thank you. I know it's difficult with people online. Um, my question really is to the mover, um, which is that I don't understand the advantage of reducing this program from 500 to 300 to come out of the surplus, because the consequence is that it then has an addition to rates funding in the outer years. Whereas if we, if the intention is to um, save um, rating impact, it would be better to have the 500 this year. So I don't understand the advantage of reducing it to 300 this year, because all I can see is an additional rating impact in the outer years. Can I just and, answer that? I'd just that like is... to understand the... Yeah, I just want to understand the rationale. Yeah, so the million dollars is always going to be spent. I think that's missing around the table. So the program is for a million dollars. So the five hundred thousand, the other, the, the five hundred thousand dollars that um, is not being spoken about will get spent in later years, because the program can't be delivered for five hundred thousand. But if you reduce it to three hundred, that's what you're proposing, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. To spread so it. So then, so then there'll be seven hundred in outer years instead of five hundred. Um. Yes. I think it's probably worth clarifying. D to be honest, um, the Mayor and myself formulated this recommendation before Schedule B was circulated by officers, and there has been a timing issue with some of the information coming out quite late, and elected members obviously needing to be proactive to address some of the challenges, and that some of that work happened before this was circulated. This um, 500,000 being in... in included in Schedule B, I haven't actually seen anything written anywhere. I don't understand what officer's intention would be for the other 500. It might be helpful to, to know if that's something that's been considered or decided or if I missed it somewhere. I, I can probably provide comment to that. So in Schedule, uh, schedule C, um, the, uh, the other schedule is distributed at the same time. Uh, 
officers have put in there as a recommendation to take out the other 500,000 next year whilst they do the first piece of work um, to assess what what further ongoing requirement may be required. But to make it clear, this $1 million program in the draft annual budget is to be uh, is currently before you as 500,000 funded out of the surplus money and the other 500,000 not included in the budget at this stage um, for reconsideration once we've been through that first piece of work. Thank you, that's helpful. Um, based on that information, if the seconder is willing, I'd probably remove any comment about the years two and three and let that be decided in next year because next year's annual budgets is, is yeah. a, a long way away and perhaps just focus on what we include this year might be. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, we're just getting so many mixed messages um, and this is on the fly a little bit um, and even some of the um, even some of the information that we're getting is obviously quite new. So um, what would you like to do, Councillor? Are you happy as a seconder if we delete any comment to year two or three at the moment and just focus on what we're choosing to include in mm. this year? Yeah. We might just keep it simpler. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. And then, and then officers can come back with what will happen um, from the, the year after. And so on that basis, um, my comment would be in terms of the answer to Councillor Johnson's question about why 300 versus 500. This is still money that needs to be paid for. Um, and whilst utilising um, surplus, which would... Would, which is actually the same as utilising debt effectively because normally the sur surplus would pay off debt. Um, utilising the surplus or the debt in this way, I still think we need to be considered and measured in the way that we spend that money. I think 300000 is a significant investment and certainly priority actions um, can be delivered through existing capability as usual. This is still over and above what we currently have in the health and safety space and over and above any other in remuneration increase. So to me, it's still a significant investment and I'm comfortable with it being 300,000, um, yeah. Okay, um, thank you, Councillor. I'll go back to the Deputy Mayor because you, you were on the list originally, yeah. Thank you, Mr Mead. Just to clarify, well, we are in comments now? Yeah, we are in Perfect. comments. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm opposing this. Um, I'm not pre prepared to compromise when it comes to health and safety and um, watering down budgets uh, even further um, is not something that I would want my name attached to, so I'll be opposing this. Um, Councillor Hancock. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr Mayor. Uh, I also would be opposing this. Um, the, the way that it had been put to us in Schedule B uh, means that we're actually going to be funding this um, through a surplus. So therefore, in the out years, it means that we're not adding burden to the ratepayer. So um, if we really wanted to actually maximise benefit for uh, this particular budget, we should, in fact, actually retain it at 500 and also allow our staff to uh, uh, put together a, a proper um, uh, health and safety project. Thank you. Councillor Beatty. Uh, ditto. I certainly won't compromise um, health and safety and I think the staff have done a good job because it was a million dollars to start off with and they've halved it. And we need to have that money up front so that we know what the programs are going to be delivered and there's nothing further required after that 500000 unless they come back to us. And if they come back to us for more then the budget was certainly less than required anyway. So having 500,000 in there is the requirement, is, is the right requirement. And no, no, we don't have to worry about the years two and three rates because we've got the money now. Uh, Councillor Harpeter. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I'm going to be going with what the officers have um, put up, which is the 500,000. So I will be opposing this recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Johnson. Uh, I will also be opposing. Um, I think it's very important that we take officer advice on health and safety, and I'm not prepared to compromise uh, when it comes to staff health and safety. And uh, we already have had a, a reduction in this budget. You know, we asked staff 
to look at where reductions could be made, the budget's already been halved and um, I would be most uncomfortable to reduce it further. Um, and my question was just around the, the um, outer years money, but since that has, is no longer there, I see no reason to reduce the programme uh, because it's, um, it's, it's a vital component of our responsibility as governors that we make sure that the staff have adequate resources to um, have a safe workplace. And um, I just think we're getting into a very risky environment when we're trying to cut our health and safety improvement. Thank you. OK, I'll comment before going back to Councillor Naylor. Look, um, councillors, um, this is like musical chairs. Nobody wants to um, play Russian roulette with health and safety. But we've got new information today. And as the mayor, that, I, that was new to me. Um, yes. Um, we couldn't get a definitive answer from uh, the acting people manager around what was actually going to be spent. Um, I asked sp specific questions around are we compliant, um, are we fully staffed, and the answer was a firm yes. Um, this is rates money. Um, I'm still to be convinced that it actually is a programme, um, and it's been chopped in half and alre already, um, and I just, look, we do have to, we have to draw the line somewhere. Um, I, I, I'm still yet to be convinced that this is uh, going to be a fully fledged program. And um, if, it, if we fail um, in this recommendation, then obviously 500,000 is better than a million. Uh, but we, I'm, I was yet, I, I've never been convinced that this was a proper program. So I, I, um, I, won't, be, I, I won't be supporting more money, definitely. Back to you, Councillor Naylor. Um, just before my right of reply, just to tidy up the wording, the uh, one million is delivered across three years, comma, with also needs to be deleted. Um, thank you. Um, I appreciate the comments that have been made. Absolutely, health and safety is a very high priority, and this recommendation does not um, negate that. What it does is puts an additional 300,000 to invest in that area in this year. This year is not the year, in my view, to be adding half a million into um, a program that hasn't been well thought through, that is not clear to elected members exactly um, how that money would be spent. In my view, um, at the moment, is that we ensure that we invest the right amount of money in programs operationally. Because if we invest more money than can actually be delivered effectively and prudently in that year, then it, it's not good use of ratepayers' money. So I do think 300,000 is a good amount to invest, and that is because health and safety is um, a high priority area. But, you know, yeah, so I'll leave it there. Okay, thank you, councillors. We'll vote on the recommendation um, on the screen there, which is um, uh, that council reduce the program uh, 2133 Health and Safety Improvement Program to 300, funded through the surplus. Okay, we will vote, please. And that has failed uh, five votes, four and 11 against. All right. We will go back to, um, well, first of all, we just need to sort out the um, adding in the two extras, which is around disability. <coughs> and um, uh, have we got that? <coughs> OK. This is again a one-off operating programme. Committee recommends including a programme uh, to complete the accessibility assessment of council infrastructure, uh, 200,000 that will be funded from the 2021-22 surplus. And it's, um, it comes from a, a submission 
around accessibility uh, assessment. So, um, Councillor Naylor, uh, you speak to this, please. Thank you. Um, uh, councillors will recall the um, submission by Nick Dow from the Disability Reference Group um, asking for this to be considered. Um, just as a, a quick refresher, the um, background to this is that in November of 2020, this um, Council unanimously supported a resolution that the CE um, undertakes an assessment of council facilities and infrastructure to be to determine whether the needs of people with disability are appropriately addressed and to identify any gaps. So then last year through the LTP pro process, a $100,000 program was put up. And um, it was only earlier this year um, through questions from the Disability Re Reference Group um, as to the scope of that work and how it was progressing that we became aware that the scope of that work had, you know, there was an error in terms of the interpretation or the translation of the intent and the wording of that resolution. And the work that has been started and is being done with the current, uh, in the current year, has really only got a focus on council buildings only. Just the background and the reason that this resolution um, was brought to council f by the Disability Reference Group was as a result of a number of quite small um, issues um, that the group were putting on the table that needed to be addressed. And I can, I'm just going to really quickly describe one of those issues. One of those issues that goes back quite a few years um, was um, one of the group raised the issue of the steep camber of the road in George Street um, before the curb. So, that means that he, when he gets out of his car in the disability car park, he can't, there's nowhere actually for him to get from the road onto the footpath. So that's a really disappointing oversight. So perhaps someone has just said, we need to tick the box and put a disability car park here, but hasn't thought about actually how a wheelchair might get up onto the footpath. That was passed on to officers and um, the individual met with an officer and sadly that issue has not been yet addressed. But there was a number of these sort of issues that um, were put on the table by the group. And we, we decided as a group that rather than bringing every small issue like that to the council table, that looking at it as a holistic, in a holistic way, getting an overall assessment to go, you know, it's not just that street and that disability park or that lift or that crossing that's not up to standard in terms of the needs for people with disabilities in our community, but there might be other things that other people have identified. And so on, in my view, this is absolutely essential. I think it was an oversight that the full scope wasn't included this year. So I think for that reason, it's really appropriate for the surplus from this year to fund the remainder of that work. And I'd really urge you, um, you all to support this. Thank you, Councillor. Any other? Councillor Johnson, online. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, just so just to um, compliment what Councillor Naylor has said. Um, remember, as a council, we did sign up to the Enabling Good Lives principles, um, which is um, ordinary lives that people with disability should be able to go about their business as any ordinary person and not um, have barriers to doing things. And when the disability reference group came to us with the accessibility review, you know, it was discussed and decided at the time that that would be a useful way of um, showing our commitment to the enabling good lives principles, that it's not just that we passed a resolution to say that we endorse them, but that we're prepared to support our resolution with action. And I think um, whilst it's unfortunate that the scope of the project wasn't uh, fully costed to start with, I do think it is important that we follow through. Um, and I think that this is an opportunity to just make sure that the work does get completed. Um, and it is important for um, the relationship that we have with our reference groups, that where we accept a, a recommendation from a reference group, that we fund it adequately so that we can achieve what we've said that we would achieve. So I would um, please ask for your support on this. Thanks. Okay. Are there any other comments? There being none, uh, write a reply back to you, Councillor Naylor? No. Okay. All right. Um, right, colleagues, we'll just get the um, back online, the 
recommendation, which is around um, uh, program to complete uh, of 200,000 uh, around the accessibility assessment, and it's funded through the 21-22 surplus. And it's in reference to submission 285 uh, from the disability um, group. All right, we will vote on this, please. And that has passed 15 votes, four and one against. All right. Um, the next one was around the water. Um, these were a direct response to the submission, and if I can get that up, please. And uh, this is from, uh, again, a submission that the Chief Executive established a new program to provide water safety improvements at the uh, Manawatu River, as recommended by Water Safety New Zealand, with a budget of 15000 in financial year 2022-23, and that's be funded from uh, this year's surplus. That's moved by Councillor Johnson, um, seconded by Councillor Dingwell, and uh, Councillor Johnson, um, I'll let you speak to this, please. Uh, OK, thank you, Mr Mayor. So, um, councillors will recall that we had um, some very compelling submissions on water safety, and one of them was from Water Safety um, New Zealand, and they um, suggested some improvements that we could make in this financial year coming up uh, to enhance safety at the river for the next summer swimming season. And, um, you know, after the tragedies that we had this year, I do think that the community is looking to us to take some definite action to improve water safety. There was a longer term uh, programme suggested uh, by Chris Vaipu from Rangitane around Rangitane Ranges, uh, but he was quite clear that that was more of a long term plan uh, program and not really something that he expected would be up and running uh, for the next financial year. But Water Safety New Zealand um, said that they anticipated that the improvements required would be around about $25,000 and that they already had funding of $10,000 uh, from another source. And therefore, uh, they were asking us for $15,000 as a one-off to provide additional water safety measures. So uh, I think that... Um, there certainly is an expectation from the community that we would take some action. Um, I know there was some immediate action taken around um, signage and that work is ongoing around signage at um, Ahimate. But nevertheless, um, I think uh, it's a small ask for something which would have a significant uh, benefit to the community. And, and so I'd be very keen to um, get this through for this financial year if possible. Thank you. Okay, um, I'll go to you, Councillor Dingwell, and then I think we've got some officer comment. Councillor Dingwell. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, yeah, so I, I'm quite happy to second um, this recommendation. We've spent quite a lot of years and a significant amount of money encouraging people to embrace our hour and, and bring people back um, to the river. And we haven't... Um, it's so so doing that has been really great, but um, we also need to make sure that we're looking after people when they are in the water as well. And so the submission from uh, Water Safety New Zealand um, speaks to how we can actually create a program that is specific to our hour. Um, and I think this is um, 25K that would be very well spent, and I'd much rather spend it upfront on um, those educational aspects and um, in, in preventative, um, preventing drownings and, and incidents in the river, uh, as opposed to all of the money and time and heartache that we spend on the other side when somebody does end up um, losing their life in the river. So it's much more, um, 
important to to put the money in at this stage to make sure that we are actually doing everything we possibly can do to keep people safe in this environment. So I urge you to um, support this. Okay, I'll just ask um, our acting CE just to make a comment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, look, I just wanted to make a, um, a bit of a clarification on this one. So, um, I think the fifteen thousand is the is the right amount. That is um, what was talked about. But it's our understanding in in relation to our discussions with Water Safety New Zealand that um, I'm not sure the fifteen thousand delivers the improvements as such. It, you know what? So the first step of it is to do risk assessment reporting. So that would be working with us and other parties. Um, so um, I just want to make, manage the expectations about what the 15,000 is going towards. I think it is going to go towards that first bit of work, which is the assessment, um, and there will be other um, a number of um, recommendations around improvements and what we can do. So, you know, we, we think it's good work, and we think we support the idea of doing it, but I'm just not 100% sure um, exactly what it will deliver the improvements. It's more the front bit. So if I could just clarify too, because I met with Water Safety New Zealand last week with Rob Hewitt and also Surf Life Saving New Zealand, Alec Mackay. And um, my take on it, um, a little bit like the CEs, it's a partnered program that they're looking at and um, Rob is very keen to do this work in the winter. So when the new season comes, at least we've got some sort of... Um, uh, recommendations, programs out of that, even if they're low level, around awareness, assessment, um, education, um, signage, um, and some cultural values as well. We heard from uh, Chris Faipu around the Rangatane Ranges, which is more around a cultural guardianship and, and connected to the tourism as well, but certainly connected to this as, this program. There'd be others, police, uh, search and rescue, um, obviously uh, iwi, um, multicultural council um, and others. So um, I'm, I'm supportive of this as well. I think uh, it's we have to do something. We had four people drown in our river um, over that um, New Year period, which was extremely sad and tragic for us. Um, it would be remiss of us not to do something about that. Um, and English was a second language with all of them. So that's just worth noting as well. Um, as our community becomes more diverse and more multicultural, uh, we need to be aware of that. So Rob was, um, and along with Alec, um, added a lot to the session and they're looking at having a forum and this would go a long way to helping um, have some genuine and authentic outcomes from that. So I'm very supportive. Councillor Harpeter. Thank you. Um, just a question to um, the officers. How much is in the surplus? We keep talking about the surplus as if it's a big, huge pot of money. So we spent a bit yesterday, so I just want to know how much have we got left? <laughs> yeah, that, that is a, a good question. And um, I think when we were reflecting on on where a result might be. Now, keeping in consideration that part of the surplus that you saw in the third quarter report, 6.2 million, included a couple, uh, couple of multi-year programs that aren't funded purely from rates. So, so I think the, the taking those out, it left us somewhere around the 4 million mark. I, I would say that I've got a level of comfort up to about 1.5 million to, to utilise out of there. Um, going beyond that starts to starts to probably get a little bit um, tricky in the sense that um, we, we don't want to cause ourselves a problem for the rest of this year as well or start getting to a point where maybe we don't have as much. Um, and putting some towards debt repayment is still a good message. So stop referring to the surplus soon. Yeah, it's, it's not a bottomless pit is probably the, uh, the angle. I think at the moment you're up at 1.288. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, there are no further comments to this one, this particular motion around the water safety um, um, recommendation. So I'll go back to you, Councillor Johnson. You need to write a reply? 
Um, yes, Joel, just to indicate that um, this is a very small amount of money. Um, but if people aren't comfortable in taking it out of the 1.5 million that's available in the surplus, then I'm more than happy to suggest that it be rates funded and it can come at the end under additional recommendations. Thank you. No, I think we're fine. Um, we'll leave it in. We'll leave it in here. Um, right, we've got it up. Um, and uh, again, I'll just read it out. Chief Executive established a new program to provide water safety improvements at the Manawatu River, as recommended by Water Safe, as recommended by Water Safety New Zealand. Budget of fifteen thousand, financial year 2022-23, and this be funded from this year's surplus. Uh, be worth noting too that there are partners in this with other funding. Um, i.e. Water Safety New Zealand themselves. So it actually um, creates a much bigger fund than 15,000. Okay, all right, we will vote on this one, please. Has passed 16 votes for and none against. Thank you. Right, um, we've done the water safety, we've done the disability. We now need to do a substantive, uh, which includes. Yeah, okay. So what we've got here, this is again around um, schedule, schedule B. This completes the one off operating programs out of this year's um, surplus. And the committee recommends that council agrees um, attachment five. Um, Schedule B, Schedule of One-Off Operating Programs, Removing Program 2025, the Urban Bus Terminal Business Case, and Adding the Accessibility Assessment and the Water Safety Programs. And note that the 2021-22 surplus will be applied. I'm happy to move that. I have a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Naylor. Um, OK, well, I'll, I'll, I'll kick off. Um, I'm very happy for the urban bus terminal to come back once the officers have got some firm answers. Um, again, I'm sorry, but it's, it, I'm, I just don't feel comfortable with everything on the fly with hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, I'm on the regional, I represent the city on the regional transport committee and a lot of the stuff that was said to me was new information. So I'm a little bit disappointed to be honest. Um, but let's bring it back to council um, and we can agree on what we need to do. It is, it is critical that we, we complete the urban bus terminal, but, but not at any cost either. And I certainly would like to see our partner, and I emphasise the word partner, Waka Kotahi, in that. So I'll open that up for any comments. Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to move an amendment that we retain program 2025 and fund it up to a maximum of 200,000. Do you have a seconder? Seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Okay. All right. Okay, just give us a moment to get that up on screen. Okay, um, we're only going to take comments on the amendment, and um, do the officers want to comment? The only additional comment I'd make is I've had an update on the timing for the review of the urban bus service, so Horizons are looking at signing a new contract at the end of 2023. End of next year, yep, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll go to you, Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think we're all agreed around the table uh, that something needs to happen in that space. It's one of the most fatigued parts of the city centre, um, and it's essential um, that we do um, move on that in terms of, obviously, the safety amenity and revitalization, not to mention the transport function that gets served through um, an urban bus terminal um, redevelopment. My rationale around keeping it in at this stage is that we want to be as well prepared and as well aligned as possible 
for going into the next National Land Transport Program so we actually get the big co-funding that we need. I would hate to see us quibbling around a relatively small amount of co-funding here and potentially risking millions of dollars of co-funding out of the National Land Transport Program to actually deliver the project. We have an opportunity to keep this moving now, to fund it without any rates impact, and to assure that we are well aligned to secure the big fish, which is the co-fund from Wakatahi for the delivery, and to also have investment and activity in this space at a critical time when Horizons is defining in detail the delivery of the upgraded um, bus service, and we want to be very active in that conversation as well to ensure that where they land in terms of the service is well suited in terms of what we're scoping in terms of a new terminal. So doing it now gives us the best chance of success um, on both of those fronts, um, and we can do this through um, investment from surplus, which we're still under Cameron's uh, 1.5 cap um, if we go this way. Um, so it's not needing to draw any rates, and if anything comes back, obviously next year we'd um, have lost that opportunity and we'd have to find new money at that point. So I'm very keen that we actually do keep the momentum here. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, there's just a couple of points I want to make on this amendment. Um, I guess, as Councillor Barrett's alluded to, is without a business case, we know nothing about next steps. Um, and we have opportunities at the moment to um, pro provide a little bit of direction or clarity to potential developers who are interested in the old post office building. Um, I, I know that some who have been interested to, to date, through meetings that the Mayor and I have had with them ongoing, um, they have often questioned what is happening with the bus terminal, what is the future of the bus terminal, what is even the design of the bus terminal, and how does that influence opportunities with that building. So I actually think that we, ne we do need to move on with this. The, the council needs to know what the plan is with that space, um, actually for many projects, because even within some of the Streets for People design work, that impacts on whether there is a um, bus terminal in the, in the same position, whether it's down the road a bit, whether it's in a different location. It all uh, interacts with the way we move in that space. Waka Kota have not funded the business case, but that doesn't mean that they are not going to fund the build. Um, with Horizons signing the contract, uh, for the new buses in 2023, that means that actually now is the time that we need to move ahead with the business case so that we have got some idea of where we're heading with that um, prior to that contract being signed. So actually I think that the timing is aligning at the moment. Um, if we push this back another year, then we are going to be out of sync and we're going to be chasing our tail. So while we have an opportunity with this surplus, understanding it is not a bottomless pit, but we do have an opportunity to use this as a business case and then work out where we're going from here. But if we don't have good planning along this, uh, around this, then we're not going to be in the driver's seat, we're going to be led. Um, look, um, councillors, I won't be supporting this. I represent you on the RTC, and this, this, is, this is not a um, slush fund. Um, uh, it will be, it actually is rates funded, by the way. There was a comment that this is not rates funded. We're just using this year's surplus, which comes from rates. So, um, look, it's not, I'm very happy and I, to have a proper, proper paper put in front of us. This is on the fly. And having been on the RTC, I can tell you now, we have not been funded for the train. We've not been funded for this business case. And we're now getting some talk that we're all going to get this paid for by Waka Kotei. We haven't had a good success rate so far. So look, I just think we're throwing money away willy-nilly. I want to see a paper that's not on the fly and um, not a wish list either. So I won't be supporting it. I think we've got to stop filling gaps. This is meant to be a partnered program. I don't see any partners except the ratepayer. So let a paper come back 
uh, do this properly. This is just because it's a surplus doesn't mean to say it needs to be spent. And uh, uh, I have a lot to do with the developers, and um, they'd probably want to be seeing a business case as well. So let's do it properly. Councillor Hancock. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'm just uh, want to signal that um, I will support this. Um, and I, I think really what's really important here is that we uh, that we need to make the most of uh, all all possible lead in time that we can in terms of planning. Uh, this would allow the council to um, uh, consider a uh, a wider set of uh, development needs in that particular part of the city, uh, and also to align to the uh, the bus service. Uh, but it also would allow us to do um, some put some thoughtful, uh, so certainly some thought. Um, and quality into alleviating some of the points of social friction that occur in this particular part of town. So I think it's particularly important to make sure that we're positioned well um, so that we've got some idea of actually what we're going to do there. Thank you. Councillor Naylor. Um, I won't be f um, supporting this. I think we haven't got enough um, appropriate information in front of us to, be to make a well-informed decision on this. Um, I think it makes a lot more sense if we can make a decision on something like this, knowing what partnership funding is available. Um, this is still, you know, surplus funding. It's still debts funding. It's, it's rates payers will pay this money. So we need to be prudent and sensible in the way that we make decisions. And I don't think this is a good way to make a decision. Okay, nobody online. Back to you, Councillor Barrett, for a right of reply. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and as noted, um, Developers and council want to see a business case here, so let's move on it now. We've got the timing, we've got the alignment, we have the investment available. This puts us in the strongest possible position to actually get funding partners and resolve what is a chronic area of underinvestment in our transport network and in the heart of our city. This is the right thing for the city to vote in support, and I'd urge you um, to keep this moving. Okay, thank you. Now we're just going to vote on the red, so we're just voting on the on the extra two hundred thousand for the bus terminal. And that does uh, pass, 10 votes for and six against. Right, we'll just get up the substantive. Okay, so the substantive now uh, is around uh, agreeing to uh, attachment five, um, scheduled one-off operating programs, including uh, the bus terminal, increasing that to a maximum of 200,000, and adding the accessibility assessment and the water safety program. And these will be uh, applied via our 2021-22 surplus. And just, um, yeah, just to bring everybody's attention to that uh, uh, health and safety improvement program stays at the 500,000 as well. All right, so um, uh, Cameron, we've got a quick add up there. What have we spent? 1.45 million. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, well, look, I'll kick off. Um, Thank you, councillors. I don't think we're making a big dent in things, um, but that is what it is, and that's democracy and the majority. So um, I'm not entirely happy, but we will go with what we've got there. Right, I'll ask for any um, comments. Councillor Johnson. 
Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to make a comment in general about the use of the surplus this year, because it's not something that we normally do. Um, but, you know, we have had an exceptional year as a result of uh, the impacts of COVID, which, apart from the health impacts on staff, have also meant supply chain issues and um, include periods of um, restrictions when work couldn't be done. And as a consequence, we've ended up with a much larger surplus than we normally have. And uh, coupled with an exceptionally, uh, well, a skyrocketing land value and um, a very sort of disparate result in terms of valuations, means that using some of the surplus is another tool in the toolbox to try and reduce rates for next year. And unlike the first two tools which we have used so far, this one helps everybody because this takes a direct percentage off the uh, anticipated rate increase. So the 1.45 million of the surplus that is going towards operational expenditure one-off programmes is 1.45 more or less, percent off the rates. And so I think that that is a significant reduction. Um, and it's, it's another addition to changing the differential, to reducing the UAGC, now uh, using part of the surplus, not all of it, note. Um, and then we'll be looking at where we can reduce spending. So I just see this as another tool that we can use to help reduce uh, rating impacts next year, and it's been quite exceptional, the combination of ending up with a large surplus because of COVID and um, being faced with, um, well, just crazy valuation results, which have resulted in, uh, you know, really large increases for some rate pairs. So this is something which will help everyone, residential and commercial sector alike. So I, th I think it's very good. And uh, I thank staff for coming up with the... Um, the programmes that we've been able to include in it and pulling them out of the normal plan, as it were. Thanks. Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Johnson's just uh, described the extraordinary number of stars that had to align for this to even be something that we would contemplate. And I hope it's something we only ever do once, but I am very prepared to support it in this time for those reasons. I do want to acknowledge the work that went into actually getting a second cycle of this particular schedule when the first one came through. It was a bit thin, it was a bit light, but actually now what we're looking at is something that will make a real dent in the overall rates headlines. I'm quite happy to support this once. Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And apologies, I dropped in and out of the queue there. Um, I want to just comment on this because we, we heard a lot um, from officers, particularly and in discussion, about the integrity of the rate system. And for me, this actually supports that conversation around integrity. At a very fundamental level, every year we budget and we challenge officers to come to us with a programme that is deliverable so that we don't overrate our community. And we go out and we ask for rates to fund the expected programme of work with the understanding that should we unfortunately fail to deliver that in that unexpected circumstance, then that very small amount of money would go to pay off debt. And this year, for all the reasons we're all very well familiar with, that system fell over and we find ourselves in a position of not having delivered the programme of work our community was entitled to expect. We've rated them for work, and we've landed, landed with a surplus that is much larger than the surplus that would normally be put towards debt. So on that basis alone, I'm happy to consider using the surplus to enable a programme of work to go ahead when that was what we said to our community, that we were going to use their rates for. They expect us to do the work that we said we were going to do. When we weren't able to do it, I'm sure there's a large understanding of the reasons for that. But this enables us to go ahead and do work this year with 
and carry forward that benefit to the community without increasing rates and in fact in decreasing the additional rates burden. So I'll be pleased to support it. Councillor Beatty. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, yes, I'm happy with this approach um, and agree with the comments. I'd just like to point out, uh, Councillor Johnson mentioned that it'd be a 1.45% reduction, but it wouldn't be because we actually increased. Um, the original uh, rates percentage reduction was 1%, and we actually added 200,000 and another 200,000, which wasn't already in year um, in the next year, so it, it's actually only back to 1%. Can so I, I just, can I just get that clarified? Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, the schedule is be, uh, that's being approved was for a 1% rates reduction, but we've added 200,000 for uh, the disability um, program, 15,000 for uh, the water safety program, and a further 150,000 for the um, bus, bus terminal business case, um, which, which uh, is in addition to the original schedule. So, so they didn't exist in the program prior. So. Um, point, point of clarification, uh, Mr Chair. Um, that is true where we sit now, but there's nothing to say that those programmes wouldn't have been voted on later in the day and been added to the overall rates increase. So I think at the moment we're not in a position to say exactly how much is saved. Um, it may well have been that those programmes would have been added in later, and in which case they would have been in addition uh, to the rating requirement. Thank you. They may have been. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. I just got this sneaking feeling that we're borrowing for the groceries, that's all. And uh, I'm still ratepayers' money, and um, they're very worthy projects, by the way. Um, so, um, and I'm and I'm moving it, so I'm in agreement. But I'm I am nervous because um, this is not a track we want to go down again, and uh, and uh, I would like in the future more information too when we get some of these programs. Having it on the fly is not good. So if you could vote please. And that is passed 15 votes for and one against. Okay. All right. We will now move to Schedule C. We'll do a little bit of this uh, and then we'll break um, for a coffee. But um, this is around the operational uh, budget changes um, and uh, it's open to the floor for any motions, uh, changes to operational uh, budget and we'll take these um, individually because there is a number of them but before we go there I will default to um, Cam to um, speak to um, the officer input please. Thank you Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, turn the microphone on, that'll help. Um, yeah, I, uh, I will uh, make a brief comment here and, and take the, the schedule um, as read, but noting I've got officers here to answer uh, more detailed uh, information on impacts of, of reductions. What, we, uh, what we we're trying to do here is, in, in reflection of the submissions that were coming in around um, the, the rates increase and particularly how the valuation has um, has caused variability, which we've already talked about, was to think what other options do we have to um, to help moderate the effect of that. So, so what we've done um, we've done a bit of prioritisation on on some of our operating programs, um, and 
and basically we came up with a bit of a categorisation system of options for, uh, for your consideration for reductions where um, we had the, uh, the first, uh, first category, category four, which, which officers were recommending that, that you would incorporate. Um, and so that included within there the other half of the million dollars of the health and safety program that we would reduce the budget by, uh, by that. Um, just wanted to highlight to you in our, in our uh, review, we actually are receiving more money for, uh, from the waste levy, so, so that is more revenue into the coffers, um, which also has a rates reduction effect, so we're suggesting we bank that. Um, then we have uh, category three, which um, we're saying has a low, low service level risk or low risk impact options to consider for reduction. I just want to highlight in here that you'll notice some of, the, some of those programs have a yellow shading in the change box. Why they are shaded that colour um, in the subtotal on the rates impact for that section uh, they don't actually reduce the rates impact because we have just considered those in Schedule B in terms of um, one-off items. So you, you could remove them, but they don't actually have a rates impact now that you have approved Schedule B. It was one of those ones that we... Um, it was a bit tricky as to what order to put this in uh, because it's a bit of chicken and egg. Um, if you didn't approve Schedule B, well, these would have been an option um, that would reduce rates now that you have they won't reduce the rates, but the other options there will. Then we have category two, which, we've, uh, which we have identified as basically medium risk items for your consideration, and then, and then we get to category one, which um, officers have defined that there is a, the, either a high service level impact or, or risk um, uh, if, you, if you proceed. But we, we really wanted to put up tangible options for you to consider, and I'm sure there are some in the list that you'll think, no, they absolutely must continue. But we really were trying to, as the Chief Executive said earlier in the day, we really were trying to um, look under all the rocks to, to provide some, uh, some options for your consideration um, that we felt you could, you could consider. Um, but I'll leave that to, to you, Mr Mayor. Great, thanks, Cam. That's uh, that's a good summary. Thank you, and appreciate the officers um, pulling together at um, uh, at some urgency these programs, and also giving us a bit of an understanding what was um, low, medium, and high, and uh, and and identified reductions which could be incorporated. So, just on that, am I taking that the the blue, which was number four, the reductions to be incorporated, is another 0.7, 0.77 off the predicted rate increase? Yes. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Councillor Naylor. Um, I did have a couple of questions related to operational programs that I think the papers might be, well, seem silent on. Um, one is the civic and cultural precinct um, work, and I'm just wondering if capacity or funding is included in operational budgets for that or not. Uh, there, uh, we, have, uh, we haven't, because we haven't made a decision on that yet, they, that has not been incorporated into the budgets, but I believe a paper is coming for your consideration. Okay, and the second one was our EWI partnership allocation. There's no comment on there on any change to that, so are we taking it that it's remaining as it was, or is there any decision being made about that? The budget, uh, the budget as it currently stands, uh, assumes that it stays as the funding um, was allowed for in the draft annual budget. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Johnson. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I just wanted to indicate that I did have some recommendations in for this um, item. Yep, we're definitely going to... There's a lot of them. We're going to go through them. Yep. So um, is it possible to do them perhaps in groups? Um, more helpful? Yes, um, it all depends whether people are prepared to 
go with the group, it's a little bit like Schedule B. There may be, yes, we'll try and do that, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Um, just a few on the queue. We'll come back to you. Um, uh, Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, just a few uh, questions on light item, line items within, if we're happy to, happy to go that way. Yeah. Um, the first is around understanding um, program 1878, which is in the um, green category on the second page there. There's reference to 90% co-funding from um, Wakatahi potentially being available um, and just trying to understand the implications of being able to secure any of that if we totally zero the fund out versus if we leave a 10% residual that could then go and grab that 90%. Could you just help me understand that? Certainly. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Hamish Friesenby. Um, just in response to that one, so the, the fund is for investigation work to apply for the, the funding rather than actually locking in the funding itself. So the 50,000 would be fully funded council at this stage. So if we retain that, we're bidding in for something that has 90% co-funding, and if we don't retain it, we're not even getting into that bidding? Correct, yes. Right. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, the second question was just around Palmy Proud, trying to understand um, how a kind of relatively marginal um, savings of 27,000 actually cuts by half the number of, of um, additions. I would have thought, you know, if we cut the budget in half, we might have then seen the number of additions half. So could we just understand the costing around that? Through the Chair, Donna Baker, Head of Marketing and Communications. Uh, Palmy Proud, there are four issues per annum. Two um, are locally produced and distributed. Two go beyond that. They go down uh, within a two-hour drive of all of um, Palmerston North, so down to Wellington, over to Napier. So the uh, number of um, copies that are produced for that, the distribution costs, etc., are higher for those two issues. So we're looking to reduce the number of issues and we would be looking at the distribution. We have said that it would reduce by two. It may not be two. Um, it may uh, change and it may be slightly higher that we can make um, savings. But we're making an estimate at the moment based on cutting our distributions and our production rates and we could save $27,000. Thank you. Further around the maintained service level um, scope in the in the green, there's agenda printing going to from 22,000 to to zero. Um, do we have any obligations around um, production of agendas and their availability to the public? And and again, um, could there be a residual there that might um, see at least some availability of paper to, for the to the public? through you, Mr. Mayor. There's no legal obligation to provide printed copies to the public. There is an obligation for us to have access to those agendas. So in order to enable that, we would need to make sure that there was um, access to the agendas in our libraries, which we do, of course, already have um, PCs available and librarians available to the public to help them to access that, but also we would need to include one in the customer service centre. Thank you. So just to clarify then, um, if, if somebody approached council and asked for a hard copy, would they be provided with one if we took this budget to zero? Uh, yeah, the Lagoima um, sets out a process for that, but yes, someone can, can request one and, and we can work with them to make that happen. Thank you. Um, finally, it was around 1453, which is the bottom of the yellow Bracket on page seven, freshwater body improvements. Um, there's a reference there to relationship and reputational impact. Could we just understand who our relationship partners are in that activity and what specific um, freshwater areas are being um, targeted for improvement? Yes, um, so there's three, part of, sorry, Kathy Diva Todd, Group Manager, Parks and Logistics. Uh, there are three partners. Uh, quite often this program ties in with Green Corridors. So some of the work that they're doing on our um, nominated streams throughout the city um, coming down towards the Manawatu River. Um, 
we also have partnership with Environmental Manamatu, and they quite often get involved in this piece of work as well. And our, of course our third um, is our partner, Rangatane. So Rangatane um, particularly have interests in um, the restoration of streams for tuna and other native fish species. The focus of this programme when it first went in was around urban streams predominantly, and there's been quite a bit of work. It's been recently reported in the, in the paper, the work that's been um, ongoing on our urban streams. But quite often we also use this project in conjunction with other work we might be doing. So, for example, some of this was um, used in conjunction with the Urban Eels project um, a couple of years ago. But primarily this programme was set up for urban streams, so within the city boundaries. And can I finally then clarify the work programme for FY23? Does that sit in the urban stream space? The program varies um, in accordance with our partnership with um, other funding, uh, other partners, because often they also apply for other external funds. So it depends where the focus is. The, um, there isn't a particular program working forward. We tend to work with our partners um, on that, on what's coming up and where their areas of um, importance to them are at the time. Thank you for that. And back to you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thank you. Um, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I've got a couple of questions. In regards to Program 1935, CATS, Public Education and Colonies Management, uh, the officer comment, I'm, I'm still a little bit unclear around what, where that is at and what's, what's happening with that. Is there someone that could speak to that? Good afternoon, councillors. Kerry Lee Probert, Acting um, Chief Customer Officer. Where we are in the process at the moment is we've received a, um, a report from Outpaws who um, do majority of the work with um, stray cat populations in Palmerston North. We're also waiting on some further information from SBCA and our colleagues in policy are doing a literature review on best practice. The intention is to pull that information together to look at um, a potential trial next year in terms of what we can do to manage the, um, the stray cat po population in Palmerston North going forward. So what, I guess I'm trying to understand what we are potentially putting at risk by amending the budget. What, what does a trial of management of cat colonies mean? Potentially, it hasn't been decided yet, potentially we were looking at using a, um, a charity such as Outpaws or SPCA to identify a couple of key colonies around the city and um, perhaps look at a, a trap, neuter and release type arrangement or rehoming arrangement, also to provide education to the people living in that area, perhaps look at working with Massey to neuter animals, that, that type of thing. If the funding's not provided, then we won't progress um, the trial any further at this stage. Okay. Um, if, the, if the funding's not provided by the council, is there someone else doing the work in this space? Well, currently, um, the Outpaws um, is probably the, the organisation that we're most aware of that is doing it um, as a charity. Um, and I guess this, this programme is in response to the bylaws, which um, asks that we, um, uh, that CATS are, are microchipped and, and registered. Operationally, that's a very difficult thing to do. So we were looking at options for um, progressing work in this area. Okay, thank you. Um, my next question is on the agenda printing. And I just wondered if we knew numbers around specific uptake or usage of the public, um, of the paper agendas that currently are available in public spaces. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, in civil terms, no, we don't. What we have at the moment is we have a full agenda, one copy available at the Customer Service Centre and one copy available at the Central Library and the branch libraries, which I'm not using the correct language for, sorry, the community libraries, um, just have just the front pages of the agenda so someone that can then go and look it up. 
where the cost lies is not in those two copies, where the cost lies is in the circulation of agendas to elected members and the executive leadership team. Thank you. Um, so let's just stay there for a moment, Hannah. So if, um, I guess I'm wondering how, how we could still provide um, the public agendas, elected members in ELT, they can, they can sort themselves out, look online. But how, how, do we, um, how do we provide that if we're looking at sort of the full budget? Because if, if we've only got two paper copies at, in public spaces at the moment, is that something that could be done within um, operational budgets to continue to provide those two copies if the cost is actually primarily people in this room? It potentially could be. Having said that, I'm not aware of other councils that still do provide paper copies to the public in the country. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't have any further questions for you, Hannah. Um, I do have one other question, probably for Donna, at, on Palmy Proud. So I'm just wondering if there's, if you've got specific numbers on how many copies, so I've, sorry, I've got two questions. I'll ask them both at the same time and you can combine your answers if you like. How many copies are distributed of Palmy Proud for the local versus the wider print run? And then the second question is, um, I'm wondering in terms of a city marketing view, the value and the cost for um, marketing the city through Palmy Proud, the cost of that versus running a full-blown campaign, if there can be a comment on that. Uh, Jessica Ballinger, marketing manager. So we do 35,000 to the to our drive time um, edition, and that still comes locally to Palmer North, to our cafes and libraries and things. Our um, smaller edition that we run is 11,000, so it is quite significantly different. The big cost is actually the distribution. Um, that is, it is the most expensive thing, getting them through phantom bill stickers around the place. Um, and they do a great job of making sure that everything's up to date as well, which is fabulous. Um, for city marketing-wise, it's invaluable, to be honest. It's a way to tell stories of our region without having to kind of promote. Uh, it's a way to subliminally promote rather than forcing an image down someone. So, yeah, it's, it's actually invaluable. Yeah, and it means that we can continue to promote our city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Harper. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm on item... Uh, 1480, which is to do with sponsorship opportunities for council with economic benefits. Sure, that was you, Luke. Um, just the questions around um, what have we used this fund for, and have we been able to attract anything from this fund for the city? Through the Chair, Donna Baker, Head of Marketing and Comms, uh, this is a contestable fund. Um, we have uh, indicated that we can reduce this um, in the new financial year. However, it does have impact um, on bids that we can attract. Uh, we have already committed uh, $10,000 into the new financial year that going to the Chamber for an event that they're holding. Um, and we do have uh, conferences that come to us and expect to have some sponsorship put back to them for them to make the bid attractive to come to the council, uh, to the city. Thank you. Um, my next question's around the 1506, which is community events. If we reduce it by the amount we are going to reduce it, well, proposing to reduce it by, how will that affect their community events? How are you anticipating that will affect that? Uh, Luke McIndoe, Head of Events. Um, so um, it's been borne out in the comments there. Uh, if we do reduce, um, we'll be looking at cutting events from the schedule. Um, we're, we're at the point now, thanks to the um, increase in costs, that we'd be diluting the event experience too much if we kept the full schedule and tried to sp um, split the money across. Uh, so if we went with um, that reduction, we would be looking at cutting some of the events in the schedule. Um, and we'd probably be looking at some of those newer cultural events. Thank you. 
And my last question is around 1246, which is the Three Waters Public Education Water. Did we um, have any of those sessions, and did anybody turn up for those sessions? Bryce Hosking, Acting Chief Infrastructure Officer. Uh, not sure, we'll have to come back to you. Sorry. Okay, thank you. If I could just ask a couple of questions. Just back to the sponsorship. Um, I'm just thinking of some committed, well, previously committed um, sponsorship um, with the New Zealand Food Awards. How would that continue if that program was cut? Through the chair, uh, there would be no money going forward. We have made a commitment uh, for the food awards that will be held later this year. That's yeah. been paid, but there would be no further funding right. available. Okay. And my understanding um, from some of our venues is we've missed on some international concerts because we don't have any funding spare at the moment. Is that right? That would be correct. Okay, thank you. Just on the international relations budget, um, and there's a, a, a motion to um, reduce that by 100,000. Can I get an understanding if we would have to make people redundant in that, in that space? Uh, b before I answer that um, specific question, I think the, effectively the controllable budget within the international relations area is only $80,000. So the, the entire rest of the uh, budget is overheads, uh, corporate overheads yep. um, and salaries. Yep. Um, so a $100,000 reduction um, would either mean there's no controllable expenditure to do activities um, or, or a, um, a staff member is made redundant. Right, okay, thank you. All right, um, we've got one, f no more questions here. Uh, Councillor Johnson, and then we'll break. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I have got uh, about three questions, I think. Uh, the first one is on Programme 1264, which is Development Contribution Fees Support for Community Groups. Um, has that been used on a regular basis? I'm aware of one or two groups that came and asked for assistance with development costs, and that's why we put that budget in. But is that budget regularly used by community groups? I think in the sort of it's it's been the budget's been around for probably two LTPs, so maybe maybe five or six years. I can think of uh, maybe two two or three um, times it's been used. So, um, in in short, the answer to your question is no, it's not regularly being used. Um. Okay, so if we were to remove this from the budget, then basically, if a community group wanted help with development contributions fees, they'd need to approach council directly and make a a request, is that what we're saying? Correct. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, and then my next question is about um, the predator-free Palmerston North, which is Programme 1450. Um, can you explain what the reduction of $10,000, what would that consist of? Um, bearing in mind that we recently, excuse me, <coughs> we recently had a paper through it, uh, saying that we'd need increased predator control in the uh, Turatia Valley. So I'm just wondering what the, what would that reduction of $10,000 uh, affect? Uh, there would just be less of that activity. Including in the Turatia Valley? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, and then uh, my other question is about the uh, roaming dogs after hours, um, which was uh, included in MSL due to a uh, public complaint. Um, there's a comment there that this has proven to be ineffective. Can I have a bit more um, explanation about how it's been proven to be ineffective? Through the chair, um, after hours roaming dogs, all the statistics uh, year to date uh, that we have um, been notified of 106 roaming dogs after hours and in 74% of occasions, we've been unable to secure or find those dogs. Um, last year, last financial year, there were 308 uh, notifications of roaming dogs. And, and, uh, and in that period of time, 55% um, um, of, of those occasions, we were unable to locate 
those dogs. 55 was that, yeah. sorry. Sorry, I'll just make a correction. It was 75, uh, sorry. For the year to date, it was 70% of time we've been unsuccessful and the last uh, financial year it was 55% of the time. Okay, thanks. And, and uh, what would you consider an effective level to be? Possibly um, around the uh, 75 to 80 per cent. Okay, and, and what's the basis for that? I think I'd have to defer um, to the councillors on this. This is a, a, probably a question for the councillors to decide um, on the effectiveness of the programme versus the um, comfort that this programme gives to the customers by having it there. Okay, thank you. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. A few of you have jumped in. Um, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you. I just wanted to ask a question about, and sorry, I'm moving between screens, so I can't see both of them simultaneously, but it was about the, the living lab reduction um, and the comment there about the um, relational risk with Massey University. And then just um, below that was the Massey Arts funding um, reduction, where there isn't a comment made about the the relationship risk um, and I wondered whether I could seek a comment on taking those two things together if that if that increased a reputational risk or if you felt that that was a manageable risk that is understandable in these circumstances. I, I, I think looking at the two together, I guess it, it does increase the overall uh, risk to the, 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 the strategic relationship with the university. Um, bearing in mind there are, um, as we saw with the meeting we had with Mass University uh, Council uh, a couple of three weeks back, um, these are not the only uh, engagements and um, shared projects that we have with the university. Thank you. And my only other question, I was just a bit confused about the redu proposed reduction for the um, Anzac Day services. Um, was that, I wasn't clear on the impact of that proposed reduction. Could somebody explain that for me? Uh, Luke McIndoe, Head of Events, through the Chair. Um, there's, a, there's a range of um, impacts it could have. Um, we'd be, again, looking towards what we're doing across two services and the level of the extras, I guess, that would go into those uh, two services, because uh, it has been indicated a desire to keep both services. Thank you. And you, you also made the comment about the 30% increase in costs. Was that within the 11,000 proposed reduction, or was that an additional um, cost increase that you were signalling? Um, anecdotally, through our current programme, we're seeing um, ac across all suppliers. So, um, yeah, just anecdotally, that's something to keep in mind. So what I'm taking from that is, your, is that even at current funding levels, there would still be a, a service level risk there because of the environment that we're in? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Nothing further from me. All right, I'm going to break now because <laughs> you all keep jumping in um, at the end. So... Let's have it. Let's have a coffee back in the chamber at five to four, and we'll try and knock this off if we can. Um, councillors, um, we'll, we'll go through what people have put through. It's not my intention to go slash and burn, but we will, might have to look at programmes line by line because I'm sensing that some might might want, might want to do that. But let's see if we can knock off um, this schedule C um, this afternoon. Back at five to four online, thank you.
Hello everyone, welcome back. Right, we will go back to the questions and um, Councillor Beatty. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just wanted to ask about the Public Sculptures Trust because it was my understanding we had a memorandum of understanding with them and that it, we sort of contracted to do that. Is that the case or...? Um. Um, through the Chair, um, we do have a signed memorandum of understanding, but that memorandum covers how we work together in terms of clarifying what the roles and responsibilities are of the City Council and the Trust. So we don't have a formal contract with them. Um, however, their planning is well underway for the next installation, and their planning is... Um, 12 months or more out, um, and any cut in funding, having confirmed that with the Trust this morning, would have an impact on their viability going forward. Yep. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Hancock. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. It's just really just a uh, query in terms of uh, do we intend to actually deal with um, the entire list, including the high-risk um, matters at this time? Um, that's totally in your court. Um, I don't intend to. Um, we'll go through those that have um, put through um, notices of motion, and there are a number of those. I'll try and take them in blocks to speed the process up. But if, if it's entirely up to you as councillors whether we start going through every, everything else line by line, I don't intend to. Uh, no, I'll pack it there. It's uh, just uh, obviously I've got an interest in the uh, City Ambassador Program, sort of in the yep. high risk area. Thank you. Yep. And that's, that's on the list here too. All right. Okay. Um, so are there any more questions of officers? All right. We're going to get into um, the um, notices of motion that have come through um, individually. Yeah. And we're going to start with um, Councillor Naylor. And it's around the... Um, the additional budget for employee remuneration, and uh, it's uh, to be reduced by $2 million to enable 4.792 um, additional for the 2022-23 year, and the application of the additional um, 4.792 remuneration is determined by the Chief Executive. So that's moved by you, Councillor Naylor, seconded by myself. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just want to start um, just by acknowledging the comments of our Acting Chief Executive at the beginning of this meeting, um, where he urged us, you know, he tried to dissuade us from any reductions and urged us to consider our ability to recruit and attract staff. Alongside that, we've all sat and listened and read the 295, I think it was, submissions um, from residents concerned about their rates increase, urging us to minimise the increase. I guess that's the challenge, I guess, of all of us as we sit around the table, is which voices, how much weight do we give to one voice versus another voice? Because both perspectives are absolutely valuable and important for us to consider in our decision making. In, in my time um, sitting around this table, um, there's never been a proposal for an increase to remuneration the size that there has been for this year, being a 13% increase, or 6.8 million. Um, this recommendation would support a more moderate increase of 4.8 million, or 9%. And in all my time here, we've never invested an additional 9% in, um, in our staff. I think it is an appropriate time to invest that level into our staff, because I think recruitment and retention is absolutely important. And I think that that amount is adequate to, de to be able to deliver on that objective, <coughs> whilst um, balancing that with the fact that it's our ratepayers who have to, to pay that additional that additional money. Um, I think I just want to acknowledge, you know, of that 6.8 million, there have been some um, 
some other costs that are offset, um, you know, and, 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 to, and the, there are some that is funded through the capitalised programmes, and I actually think that's a very sensible approach. I know I've asked a lot of questions about that, and sometimes people assume if I'm asking a question I must be opposed to something, but that's not always the case. Um, I think we do need to be careful how much we fund from debt, um, and it does need to be balanced with what we're delivering in terms of the capital space. But we need to acknowledge that 3.5% of our rates increase, of our proposed rates increase of 83 3.5% of that does relate to the, in, the proposed increase in, in terms of remuneration. I think in the context of what our community is dealing with and the impact of revaluations, I think this year is too much to impose that level of increase on our community. So I, I would, look, I'll, some of my colleagues at lunchtime told me to try and keep it brief, so I will leave it there um, and really urge you to give appropriate weight to those community members who have urged, to have asked, who have asked us and pleaded with us um, to actually reduce the rates increase because many of them actually cannot afford it. And I'm, yes, now I am going on, but you know I'm really concerned about the impact of some of our lower income families um, of some of these rates increase. So I'll leave it there. Uh, thank you. Um, Councillor Look, I'll, I'll chip in as well because I seconded this and, and I have uh, all the reasons that Councillor Naylor has spoken to. Look, um, councillors, this is new operational MSL funding for new positions and we, I just want to, first of all, we haven't had this level of transparency in the past. So I do want to thank the officers for more transparency and honesty around the recruitment uh, and retention. We heard about the 140 vacancies, and that's reduced, and that's great to you know 120 plus. But we will still be rating for a whole lot of empty seats, and we we just can't continue to do that. Um, you heard today um, uh, around the the, the submissions um, and what the, the the majority of submissions said, and it was around the significant rate increases um, we are putting on people. Do we really want to be rating for empty seats? This recommendation still gives a lot of headroom uh, for the CE and the management team um, to work um, with increase, increased um, remuneration, but at a slightly reduced level, level on what they've asked for. And again, that was under an old structure and an old management team. So I would please ask you to start to look at what we're doing. Uh, we have hardly made any decreases um, so far, so um, this is one which will make some significance. So I just, again, implore you, this will be rating for empty seats. So please support it. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I would like to offer another perspective in that we, well certainly I'm hearing from people in our community on an ongoing basis who are frustrated with the delays in response from council, in service delays, in um, getting pieces of work completed, particularly in infrastructure, um, in repairs and maintenance, call centre wait times, not at particularly high peak um, times of day, at, at a range of things, because we are currently understaffed. When we are advertising positions, we have people who are applying for good, good quality jobs, um, good responsibility, um, I think a pretty good organisation to work for, and then we are paying them barely over the minimum wage. We are having people get to the final stage, realise what the remuneration offering is, and then walking away at that point. If we want to attract good quality staff, we have got to offer well-rounded, good quality jobs. The pressures that are currently being faced within our workforce, we have got people who are carrying two roles 
whilst trying to do their current role and then acting in another role. And I, I know we've made jokes but in particular about somebody who's in the council chamber today acting, acting, but actually this is across the organisation. I can think right now of half a dozen people who are carrying multiple workloads because there are spaces that they are trying to fill to keep the team running. I, I can't think of an example over the past probably more than six months in a meeting where there hasn't been reference to high workloads, stressed out staff, pressures, cost, market pressures that are pinching our staff into other organisations because we have got a, um, a wage lag that we have not addressed. I think the comment from Councillor Nail is absolutely spot on that we have not seen this kind of increase because we have just fallen further and further behind. This is an opportunity for us to draw a line in the sand and say, actually, if we want to uh, achieve the vision we have set, then we are going to put the right budgets in place. And that is not just on, on physical resource, but that is on our labour force as well. Our people are our most valuable asset and so I am absolutely not supporting any decrease uh, to what is proposed with remuneration review. We have been talking about this for years, even pre-COVID. This has um, completely skyrocketed the problem, but week after week we're hearing about people who are leaving to do a similar role in another organisation or for a government department with much higher um, wages because we cannot keep up, we cannot offer the same thing. And I'm not suggesting that we go in and do a match because I don't think we'll ever be able to do that, but actually this is an opportunity for us to address the problem. And I don't want us to take a half-hearted approach. I think actually we, we put a line in the sand and we say, no, we have got a vision, we want to fulfil that vision, and that starts with our people. So I'm not supporting this and I won't support any other proposals to reduce um, those budgets. Councillor Barrett. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We seem to have gone from just introducing this straight into comment without any scope for questions. Is there scope for questions? No, we're just we're going to get on with it. Well, I, I did say I went round the table. I looked at you. Uh, do you want questions? Is there any further questions? And I never got that from anybody. Sorry, my so, point of clarification then for me, I, I had only understood that about the schedule, um, the line items that we had, not about new um, uh, recommendations coming forward from elected members. So I do definitely have questions about. Okay, okay. all right. Well, I'll allow it this time, but please, when I put the nod up, otherwise we're going to be here till next year. Thank right? you. We'll just ask the acting chief executive if he could give us a snapshot view of the implications of this recommendation in terms of the organization and in terms of the wider community. Um, <clears throat> thank you, uh, thank you, uh, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, this is the one that I said right at the start that we're gonna strongly dissuade you from, from going here. Um, having said that, I, look, I completely get why in, you know, this year it's, it makes it really awkward because we are trying to look under every bush to see how we can address or keep the rates down. However, in this case, I do think it is counterproductive. Um, we are seeing a situation that we, I have never seen in my lifetime, in, in all of my working career, um, in terms of you know, being in an organisation where um, wages are uh, going up so fast that we just, you know, we, we've been trying to do a remuneration review for, um, for about 18 months now, and we're sort of bringing that to a close, but in the meantime, um, you know, things are getting away on us. You know, we've done reviews in various areas to try and address the fact that we can't um, retain staff. We get those reviews finished, we do it, we, you know, put put the wages up and we're now we're already out of the market. So it is that is the, the background of the environment we're in. Um, we've been trying to attract, particularly in the infrastructure team, um, engineers. Um, our, our wages that we pay aren't high enough to meet the thresholds to um, employ people from overseas because they don't, we're not paying enough to actually meet the, the visa thresholds. So we have to address those. When we do, when we get our review done, it will have an impact in some areas. 
um, we've already addressed um, the wage um, workforce and at, at the depot particularly, um, and that's been quite successful. We're now finding that we can finally hire people again. It's really important we do the next piece and we do it really fast. Um, the other thing I just sort of point out, and, and Cameron can jump in and, and clarify the, exactly how it works, but it is also counterproductive because it's... So yes, there are new positions, but the reality is at the moment we, we're spending money to make up for the fact that we have got these vacancies and we can't, um, and we can't fill them. So it comes in form of um, consultants and um, over time, um, it's um, you know we're we're spending you know quite a, quite a bit of money that that comes out of the same budget for things like recruitment and what have you. So th you know you take the money away and it actually has quite a significant impact on our ability just to get you know just to keep going. So um, look, it will have a big impact. Um, it will impact you know our ability to attract and, and retain people. It will also have an immediate impact you know on our ability to actually keep some you know, keep some of this work going because of those impacts around, um, you know, we offset the fact that we've got the vacancies by, by using consultants. So, look, we can, we can certainly go into more detail around exactly how, how the, the number is made up, um, how the Im impacts are in terms of our assumptions around um, vacancy levels, around um, turnover and, and, you know, the assumptions that we've made to try and explain that. But I think it just comes back to the fact that, you know, we need this money. We need this money to be able to um, address the issues that we have and to be able to, you know, maintain, just to maintain the service levels that we've got because our people can't go on forever like this. Thank you. Brief comment. Yeah. So I'm uh, not prepared to support the recommendation here. I think for me it comes down to the intersection between um, our staffing and recruitment, our well-being and retention, and what we actually deliver in terms of impact for the community. And you know, to, to have an ongoing basis where we're carrying very high levels of um, vacancies is simply not sustainable, and we need to um, do what is within our realm of power to actually enable the chief executive and his team to um, address that as best they can in the coming year. Um, and so from my perspective, we need to make sure that's fully available to them. Councillor Dennison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I too was wanting to have a question, um, if I could, before I made comment. One, the, what I wanted to clarify is I thought there was two budgets associated with this one was to deal with the wage lag and to deal with the market pressures on existing for existing staff, and this was the, an, a, a, a budget that was set aside for recruitment. Did I understand that correctly? Sorry, uh, uh, correct me if I've misinterpreted the question. Um, the uh, the way in which the remuneration budget increase um, is is broken up is into is in two parts one one part of it uh, is is to help fund the remuneration review that the chief executive outlined in the other uh, other aspect um, of of the increase we've uh, we've made some assumptions we we've we're suggesting we'd be better off to reduce our external uh, uh, reliance on external consultants to deliver uh, some functions, particularly in the uh, in the capital renewal space and and a couple other spaces, um, and and build some in-house capability to ensure that we're able to deliver the programs that we that we're putting forward. So, so that uh, that is the the budget broken down into two parts at a at a uh, high level. Does that is that the question you're asking, Councillor? Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, and just to make comment, uh, Mr. Mayor. I wouldn't normally be supporting um, this type of recommendation um, because I do recognise that there is wage lag and, and wage pressures in the market. But like you mentioned, Mr Mayor, around having empty seats, I don't believe we're going to fill all these positions in the first day of the first month of the financial year and that there'll be a lag of, of appointments um, throughout the year. And so... I can't see how we can be using all of that type of budget 
3.5% of the rates um, and how it can be exhausted in, in the financial year when the recruitment takes, there's a lag. And um, and so, yeah, I'm, why I'm optimistic that we can recruit those roles, I think is, it's not realistic that, that we will. So I'm open to having a reduction and I'll support the recommendations. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Beatty. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I totally agree with um, Councillor Dennison that we won't be able to recruit those roles first off. But, and there was a comment about the 120 empty seats, but they're not empty. All those positions over the, have, and they're not perm they haven't been permanently filled, but we have been paying for contractors. And contractors cost us three times the, the cost of a permanent position out of our own people. So the longer we have to takes to recruit, then we definitely need the money because on the first day we, we will be paying contractors, so it's a false economy. I have bumped into quite a few st ex-staff that are in positions, and I know they've been poached from us, and they've been getting something like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 more than what we could afford to pay them. So we are setting up the council to fail if we don't put this budget in. So it's a total fa false economy. And to say that, I mean, if we weren't doing the work, then that's different, but we are doing the work. Look at the issue we've got time after time about arborists. We can't get an arborist. The, the cost of arborists, the, their salaries, have, they're astronomical than, we, than five years ago. So to get our own team of arborists, which we, has been mentioned several times in this chamber, we are going to have to pay the market rates for it. And it's not just 9% increase, it will be a lot more money than we're used to being paying. But now we're out contracting that work, which costs us a lot more. So I think the reality is, if you want the staff, you've got to pay them Otherwise, we're going to be in the same position in 12 months' time with 120 vacancies, and it's going to be worse because you're going to have a lot more people on the council will have left to have gone to get higher wages elsewhere. So sorry, I won't be supporting this. Uh, Councillor Harper. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I've gone round and round on this one, but I have decided that I will support it. And the reasons why I will support it, um, I have got sympathy for the Chief Executive and the leadership team. And I did listen very carefully to what the Chief Executive said. It is a very tough market out there as an employer, and um, people in Palmerston North and the region are looking at all the options that they can get with different you know, employers. So it is tough out there. and I, and I and I do have sympathy for um, the, the council in that respect. But I'm also looking at our ratepayers and I'm looking at what we can cut back. And this is an opportunity to be able to do that and that's why I'm voting that way and that's why I'm voting in this case for this recommendation. Thank you. Back to you, Councillor Naila, for a right of reply. Thank you. Um, it's a really important discussion to have. Um, I think one of the um, comments that the CE made um, was around the remuneration review. My question is, who is doing the review of our community's ability to pay? I think that's the point that I'm really wanting to um, encourage you to consider today. There's, every, there's all sorts of valid arguments for... Of course it would be more ideal to have more money to pay people more. Um, however, we do just have to balance that with who's paying for that. Um, I think, you know, with the cur I agree with all of, you know, many of the comments that have been made. I'm aware of the pressures on staff. My view is we're trying to do too much. And look, there's, there's, um, we'll get to some of that in the, in the coming schedules. I think if we can't get done what we're doing, with the resources that we have, 
we need to reduce what we're trying to do. I think it's unrealistic, and so sorry, that, that probably does touch on future discussions in terms of our capital programme and other operational programmes. Um, the two budgets, look, I've, I've gone around and, and um, changed a few options of how I wanted to put this on the table. Yes, there are two, two different sort of parts of the fund. 2.8 million currently is allocated towards that market movement. That's a 5.5% increase. I think that would, that would be lovely in an ideal world, but it's not the reality of what most of our rate, pay, rate payers are getting in terms of being able to fund this increase. Um, I also think, you know, the new positions, 34 new positions, is about a 5% increase in FTE. I don't think that's realistic at the moment. So I think this resolution gives the ability for the Chief Executive to determine how the additional funding is allocated. If that is that he um, decides that less than 34 new positions is more appropriate at this time, but is able to pay people better, then so be it. I think that this recommendation gives the Chief Executive the envelope and, said, and says, please do the best you can with this. It's a big increase, it's a 9% increase, a bigger increase than we've ever had before. I think it does appropriately recognise the need for recruitment and retention, and I do think it recognises also the fact that we need to weigh that in balance with our community's ability to pay. Okay, thank you, councillors. Right, we'll get the recommendation up and then we'll vote. All right, it's around um, the proposed additional budget for enumeration be reduced by $2 million uh, to enable the 4.792 additional for the 2022-23 year. Be determined by the Chief Executive. If you could vote, please. That is passed, eight votes for, seven against, and one abstention. Okay, we'll move now to um, number three, which is around, um, uh, it's a group of the blue on, on off, um, Schedule C, and it's around, if I can get it up, It's around the committee recommending that council reduce operational expenditure according to Schedule C, uh, category with the following budget lines. Uh, 2133, the Health and Safety Improvement Programme. Uh, the MSL operational budget around business assurance consultancy. Uh, MSL again around minor budget corrections and MSL around waste levy extra income there. Uh, increase in income. So that's been moved by Councillor Johnson, second by Councillor Naylor. I'll go to you, Councillor Johnson, to speak to it, please. Uh, okay, well, um, this encompasses the suggestions in um, attachment Schedule C that are in blue at the top. So that's the uh, identified reductions to be incorporated. And all of them are um, suggestions that uh, council staff have uh, put forward, uh, including the reduction in the health and safety program, um, budget um, corrections, and a, a sort of banking and increase in waste levy. So I don't think these are controversial. Um, when added up, they give us a saving of 0.77% on the rates. And so uh, I'm hoping that you will support this. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Does anybody else want to comment? I think it's... Um, okay. Do you want to write a reply? <laughs> no. Okay. We'll get, the, we'll get the recommendation back up again.
and I'll ask you to vote, please. Just check you've voted. There's still one of the councillors to vote. We're not sure who it is. Just make sure you've got it. Oh, I better check. Oh, it's me. That's passed unanimously, 15 votes, four. Thank you. <laughs> it's been a long day. All right. Um, We'll get the next recommendation up, and this is around, uh, again, operational budget changes. The committee recommends that Council reduce operational expenditures according to Schedule C, Category 3, in the following budget lines. Um, and they are 1431 uh, one, around walkways, shared path, paths with art and heritage trails, uh, 1878, active transport innovation, uh, 2130, heritage advisory panel, uh, 1914 Electronic District Plan, uh, 1936 Section 17A Review, and uh, MSL around the um, operational around the agenda printing. Um, and uh, Councillor Johnson, you have moved this, seconded by Councillor Naylor. I'll go to you to speak to it initially. Thank you. Okay, so these are um, the balance of, re of suggestions in the green category. Um, so the ones that are highlighted in yellow have already been approved to be paid through the surplus. Um, of the remaining ones, um, I have um, left in, in other words, not suggested that we cut, the development contributions for community groups, the public education and co cat colony management, and predator-free Palmerston North. And um, I understand that other elected members may have different views about what's in and out on this particular one. Um, and I think it's open to you su to suggest amendments if you wish to do so. But this is my uh, starter, basically, on where I think we can make savings in this category. So um, I'm not going to talk about each one individually. I think the officer comment is sufficient. Thank you. OK, thanks, Councillor. Um... Okay, I'll, I'll let it, look. I'll let it run because there's a few of you want to speak. Um, I've, I'll also speak at the end. Um, uh, Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It will start off with a bit of just how we want to do this process-wise. I'd like to um, see 1878 separated. I think that might be the most clean way to approach that. I'm not prepared to cut that particular program. Um, principally because, as we heard um, in answers to questions, it actually activates our ability to get into a 90% co-fund of Wakakatahi, and I don't want to see us um, saving a couple dollars here and then missing out on hundreds of thousands of dollars of 90% um, leverage coming from Wakakatahi in an area where we have a lot of challenges that we know about and we need to be able to address. So for the relatively small sum, I would like to see us um, maintaining our activity in Program 1878, Active Transport Innovation. Okay, um, what we'll do is we will take those, some of, if somebody wants to take them separately, we'll take them separately. Um, I'll, I'll kick off with 2130 around the Heritage Advisory Panel. This is something that um, has been signalled for some time. Um, I realise it's a, 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 um, a reasonable number at 135,000, but actually as a staff member, um, and um, it was spoken about with some passion at the leaving function of um, our former archivist, um, um, Leslie Courtney, and um, this this will go a long way to informing some of that work. Um, it's something that the, the the community has wanted, so I'd, I'd like you to have a think about um, uh, separately voting on that one as well, please. The rest, I'm, I'm fine to 
put up as. Uh, and uh, are there any others that wish to? So, Councillor Hancock. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Look, I just want to signal I've got some real issues, I think, with uh, the uh, agenda printing being removed. I think um, uh, for a lot of councillors and, and probably council officers, once you actually get into agendas which are 100 pages plus, um, try trying to actually digest those and actually make any sort of meaningful um, uh, sense of those uh, for work in the chamber, I think, is probably unreasonable. So that's uh, my comment on that. OK, so do you want to separate that as well? Yes, please. OK. Um, the Deputy Mayor. Um, I, I was just going to make a comment. So, I mean, in regards to what is currently in front of us, I'm happy to support those three and just to signal that I'll, um, once we've got to the conclusion of Councillor Johnson's recommendations, just to signal that I'll pop up the um, reduction of the $15,000 for the CATS Public Education and Colonies Management Programme 1935. If you have a, do you have a seconder for that? Yeah, OK, Councillor Naylor. Thanks. OK, all right. Um, and Councillor Beatty. Um, I'd just like to signal that I'd like to put uh, 1264 back in to be removed. Do you have a, do you have a seconder for that? Yeah. Yep, Councillor Harpeter. OK. Do you want to speak to that now? I'm just... No. I'm um, Sorry, Mr. Mayor, just point of order here. Is it not better just to vacate this motion and just do them line by line? Because it's just well, too confusing. Well, we, we, were, we, were we were going to do that. Um, well, we've got three I here. That it would help us on and, and speed things up, but clearly people want to do a line by line debate. So okay. if you would prefer, let's just pull this out and do them one at a time. Okay, all right, we'll, take, we'll, we'll start with 1431. We'll take the other two separately. I'll just get it up on just give just give oh, team a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do them separately. So we've got the first one up, which is around uh, 1431, around walkways and shared pathways, art and heritage trail. So, um, Councillor, do you want to speak to this particular one? Uh, no, I don't. I, okay. I think that's fine. All right. Anybody else wish to speak to this one? There being none, okay, we're going to vote on this particular one. Has passed 15 votes, four none against. Okay, we'll now go to the second one. Now, this is around the um, 1914, uh, it's around the electronic district plan. Um, Councillor, do you want to speak to this? Um, only to say that this is a significant cost, but um, staff have signalled that it could be deferred for a year and that it would actually allow for further information on the outcomes of RMA reform. So um, I think that this would be sensible to defer. It's not cancelling it. It's just uh, pushing out a year. Yeah, I would have, having been um, involved in submissions around the RMA, there's still a bit of work. In fact, uh, uh, though, I think the Deputy Mayor and I were at the, at the luncheon yesterday, and I can specifically recall the Deputy Prime Minister talking about this big bit of work that's been going on in RMA, uh, and it's still going on, and it'll still be going through the House by the time um, this programme would have been in our plan. So as long as it's not... Um, cancelled, and it's certainly there, um, I'm happy to support a deferment of just one year. Anybody else wish to comment on that? There being none, we'll get the recommendation back up. And we will vote, please.
and has passed 15 votes for none against. Thank you. Right, we will be putting up the, this is the um, one around 1878, Active Transport Innovation. Um, and uh, back to you, Councillor. Um, yeah, so this one, again, is a, a one-year deferral, which, according to officers, is low risk. Um, I understand that there's a potential of Waka Kotahi co-funding, but it is only a potential. And as you said yourself, we've been a little bit unlucky with some of our Waka Kotahi co-funding recently. So, um, you know, I'm not normally one to target active transport or anything else, but um, I have made a, a determined effort this year to look for savings wherever possible. And I think that any programme where officers are advising, we do have potential to defer it um, to make some savings on rates. And I think we should be trying to do that. So I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm approaching it with a, a very cold heart this year. Are there anybody else wish to comment? Um, the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just, uh, I'm not going to support this. Um, I think potential for Waka Kotahi funding is still potential for Waka Kotahi funding, so I'd rather that we, we give it a go. Um, I just want to make a, a, a broad comment around um, the, uh, the items that we are considering. Obviously, there are comments from officers, but certainly my read of this is, is that, that staff haven't come to us and said, have you thought about this? I think they've very, very reluctantly searched for opportunities for us to consider. And so I just want to make sure that we understand that actually I don't think they're saying, here's a great little saver over here. I think it's a lot of reluctance that the items are in front of us for consideration. Um, and so, yeah, I wouldn't want us thinking that it's staff, staff suggesting this is a good idea, it's more out of obligation to reduce the rates. Okay, nobody else wishing to speak. Um, we've got a number in front of us, so look, we'll go to a vote, please. Oh, can I just have a quick right of reply? Yeah, okay. Um, yes. Sorry, I, I just wanted to comment on the, uh, the last comment that was made there about, you know, um, it's not staff suggesting this. No. We uh, said to staff that we wanted to make reductions in the rates as a result of submissions. And we asked staff to bring stuff forward rather than us uh, with uh, less knowledge, perhaps, of the operational detail, uh, picking on specific programmes. And I'm very grateful for staff. They have brought forward stuff. They have made comments. They've put them in categories. Um, I'm not suggesting that it's easy for anyone. And um, those of you who've been around the table for a while will know that, you know, it's not easy for me either. But um, I am aware that uh, community expectations are that we will uh, not be uh, raising rates as high as we proposed in the draft, and therefore any opportunity needs to be taken uh, within reasonable limits anyway. Thank you. OK. We will vote now on um, 1878 around active transport innovation. Please vote. And that has passed 10 votes for and six against. Okay. Right, we will now move to um, 2130, Heritage Advisory Panel. Um, over to you, Councillor. Um, yep, yeah, so again, this is a... Uh, my understanding is that this is a deferral, um, although I note that that isn't actually stated in the uh, in the office comment, but my intent anyway is that, that it be deferred. And um, my rationale is that this is a new initiative and that given the situation that we're facing this year, that a new initiative could perhaps wait a year. Um, Heritage is still going to be here. And I do think that this is something that the community would benefit from. But I don't think it's a priority at this time. 
Thank you. Okay, I've already spoken, so I won't speak again, but um, is there anybody else that would like to speak? Okay, we'll get the recommendation. Oh, sorry, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and I do apologise for my technical difficulties. Um, I would want to seek clarification, if possible, that this is a deferment. Um, the conversations I've had about this have led me to believe that that was the proposal. And on those terms, I would support us deferring this programme. Um, and you can all imagine that that is absolutely not something I want to do. And um, because I really do believe in the value of this as a programme and the value of having specialist officer support for our heritage programmes. But we are where we are today and the community expectation is very clear to me. So I will support this if it can be confirmed to me that it's a deferral of the programme and not a deletion. The wording says, re re um, is it defer or re can we just see the recommendation? By changing a, some, some wording, it might clarify. It says reduce. So I'm I'm happy to change that to defer okay. operational expenditure yep, think, for think, a year, yep. if that makes it clearer. That, thank you, Councillor. That's certainly my intention. And that, that would certainly be um, a weight off my shoulders. Thank you. Okay, so we've changed the word defer operational um, around he the Heritage Advisory Panel. Okay, um, Councillor Naylor. Oh, I was only going to comment that there is a specific recommendation on the next page that had the wording um, for it to be deferred, um, but it was, it, it was um, submitted prior to Schedule C, so uh, if that was helpful, but it, we've got defer in there now. So yeah, we've fine. got defer, which I think um, satisfies one councillor, and, um, and the uh, mover has agreed to that, and you have agreed to it as a seconder? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, anybody else wishing to speak? Write a reply back to you, Councillor? No. no, thank you. Right, great. We will vote, please, on deferring Heritage Advisory Panel. And that has passed, 14 votes, four and two against. Yeah, I don't think you recorded my vote correctly. Anyway, can we just take a revote on that? My vote was not recorded correctly. Don't think it's going to make much difference, but so we're just going to revote on this please. That has passed, 14 votes, two against. Right, okay. Okay, if you can just double check that. All right, didn't make much difference anyway. Um, okay, moving on to the next one. Um, and this is around uh, Program 1936, Section 17A Review. Uh, back to you, Councillor. Um, yes, I think um, we've certainly done enough Section 17A reviews recently uh, without needing to budget in for another one. And um, I, I just think if we had a year without doing them, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Okay, uh, there's a ditto from me, definitely. Um, anybody else wishing to speak? No? I uh, don't think you need a... Oh, there is. Okay. 
Uh, Councillor Harpeter. Sorry, just an officer comment. Um, is there any obligation in that we have to do any in the next financial year? No. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just to say that I do support this one. Um, if there is a sudden unexpected need to Section 17A review something, then that can come through the Chamber and we can put a fund in place, but we don't need to budget for it at this stage. OK. All right. No need for reply, Councillor. OK. Let's put this to the vote. It's passed 16 votes, four none against. Right, we now go to the MSL operational funding and around um, uh, reducing the agenda printing. Um, Councillor Johnson. Yes, um, this is an interesting one because I, I know that some electors, elected members do rely on their printed agendas. Um, but I have not had a printed agenda since the first COVID lockdown when they weren't supplied for a period of time. And um, I must admit, I quite liked my paper agendas, but I was able to make the change. And I think uh, if it's a cost-cutting exercise, that those who really, really feel that they can't do without uh, a printed agenda might be prepared to print it for themselves. But I think the agendas are all uh, provided online. Um, you can... Um, as your eyes get um, a bit less effective, you can um, you can magnify up the print online, which you can't do in the printed version, um, and it's also a saving on trees. So um, I think it will be sensible to make this saving, and um, sometimes it's actually just not having one that forces you to make the change. So there we are. Okay, Councillor Hancock. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr Mayor. Uh, no, I won't actually uh, agree with this uh, particular um, uh, recommendation. As I said earlier on, um, large agendas, uh, the manageability of those uh, in terms of uh, tabulating uh, important uh, points, which uh, in terms of um, bringing arguments uh, um, or otherwise into the, uh, into the chamber uh, is problematical. Um, I think we do have uh, some obligation to uh, all members of, of the public uh, not all uh, members of the public are millennials. Um, and in terms of um, encouraging democracy, uh, there are some risks at there in terms of making sure that we are inclusive of all people and uh, are encouraging participation in the de democratic process. So for those reasons, I won't, uh, won't support it. Um, the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I am happy to support this recommendation. Um, my only concern with it was around um, providing the hard copies to our community and whilst it wasn't directly answered um, or confirmed as to whether that could continue, I certainly think there would be scope that if, if we're looking at supplying one or two hard copies, whether it's um, downstairs or in the libraries, then um, that's more an area that I'd be interested in in continuing. Um, in terms of uh, getting the agenda to staff and elected members, um, you know, one option is, is that we make a device available to people in their role <laughs> that they could access it through there. Um, you know, if we already do that, then we've already ticked that box. But um, I certainly think that uh, it's not a um, it's not an age issue and it's not an accessibility issue. I recall Councillor Finlay very proudly telling us multiple times that he was the first paper-free elected member. Um, and so <laughs> I, I would say that, yeah, this, this is a great step for us to take uh, at this stage. <coughs> Thank you. Councillor Beatty. Um, 
Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think it also depends on what committees you're actually involved in, and I actually prefer my paper copies, especially when I'm doing my financials. I find it really difficult on screen, especially when I want to refer back to um, different sheets. I mean, look at today. We've got sheets all over here, and I haven't used my iPad. And I, I think that it should be optional. Um, it's just the way people like to do work. The other thing too with Zoom meetings, I've found it more needy to have a paper copy because you've had um, pre presentations on the screen and you can't, I can't watch two screens on my, my screen's not a huge one. I want to have something that I can sit on my desk and look at my screen. And I think that if you're making it difficult for people to do their work, I don't think that's fair. And I, whether this goes through or not, if I have to pay for my own co paper copies, I'll pick them up. But I'm, and I certainly don't want to print them off on my little, little home printer, which won't be able to cope with all the. So I, th I think people are being pretty picky uh, um, on something that it makes it difficult for some people to do the work. And I think, you know, I might have a disability that I need paper. So whatever. Um, Councillor Dingwell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, um, I won't be supporting this, interestingly. Um, I am a millennial, but I do actually need my, my bits of paper, especially when I'm doing um, online things. And one of the issues that I have is actually around accessibility. So, yes, we may have a device, but I will say that in my house, being an old house, um, my internet connection isn't all that great a lot of the time. And so um, have, being able to do things like um, go into this Teams meeting is one thing, but if I tried to bring up um, uh, the papers and try and look at the papers online at the same time as doing the screen, you'd lose me. Um, you know, the screen would freeze. It's just, it does not work for me. I, I don't have... Um, good access to good internet in this house. And so I think that's one of the issues that we have is not everybody has access to all the gadgets that they need. And sometimes it is easier for people to um, use the paper paper copies. Having said that, I do feel that 22,000 for um, uh, agendas is a bit excessive. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, how we justify that, but I do wonder if that's more around the currying than the printing. Um, but yes, I won't be supporting this one just because I feel like people need to be able to choose um, what is accessible for them. Councillor McAllard. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, I wasn't going to speak on this, but I feel like I have to since the millennial word was brought up. <laughs> um, I don't think it's a millennial thing or old generation thing at all. I think it's a matter of choice and accessibility. Personally, I like my papers. It gives me the opportunity to highlight, go back on them and uh, write down notes on them and uh, points of reference and that sort of things, which sometimes I struggle to do online or electronically. So. Um, I mean, I feel like we're, you know, doing a bit of cherry picking here and stuff. So I think people should be given the option um, to either go online or access those files electronically or have their papers however they wish or whatever way it works for them. So I will not be supporting this, unfortunately. OK. Oh, Councillor Denison. I was just to be very quick. I've just done a little survey and two out of three millennials rather have a paper copy. And I just thought that was an interesting fun fact. <laughs> have you finished? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I can't understand why we are spending so much time on this. But anyway, back to you, Councillor, for right of reply. Oh, I don't have a right of reply after that, Mr Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's get it up on screen. We've spent 15 minutes on this. Um, all right, this is around uh, reducing uh, the agenda printing. Can you vote, please?
<laughs> you took away the casting vote. <laughs> so in the, in the interest that it does not pass, it, um, it stays. That'll be one for the media. Okay, right. Um, we have got now somebody... Oh, here we go. Um, okay, this comes from the Deputy Mayor around uh, Program 1935 around CATS, Public Education and Colonies Management. The Deputy Mayor. Uh, just briefly, obviously this program is in response to the bylaw that we established. Um, however, I do have a level of comfort knowing that there are actually groups in the community who are working in this space, so we won't be, um, there won't be a void in the city um, for this work. So I'm, I'm happy to add this to the community response to reduce the rates. Okay. Um, open it for any questions. Comments, um, Councillor Johnson. Uh, yes, I mean, it's not a large amount of money, but um, one of the things that we didn't do when we passed the bylaw was to uh, make sure there was sufficient funding to enforce it. And so I do think if we've got the bylaw and we're not doing anything either in terms of public education or in terms of colony management, then we're not really... Um, being very authentic in in having the bylaw in the first place. Um, and the other thing I would say is that actually the colonies ca cause a huge amount of nuisance. And there's a public health element in controlling cat colonies. Um, cats do uh, carry a number of uh, transmissible diseases to people, uh, particularly toxoplasmosis. So I do think uh, it will be sensible to maintain this very small amount of funding for the amount of benefit that the community would get from it. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else wish to comment? No? Write a reply? Deputy Mayor? No. Okay. We're going to put it to the vote. Thank you. It has passed 13 votes, four and three against. Right, um, we'll get the next one up, which is around the community development contributions for support for community, sorry, development contribution fees, support for community groups. And this is 1264. Um, and over to you, Councillor Beatty. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, this is for when community groups are doing um, buildings on council land mostly and we've only had two or three times in the last six years and there's nobody I am aware of out there at the moment that is doing any development, especially in these times, that would need that funding. And if there was a one-off, they could come. They can come to council and request it. So it's going to be. We're just going to be putting it there just in case. And I think the odds are it won't get used. So I, I just think it's a, a bit of a waste. If, if I really thought there was some community, I mean, looking out there of all the groups that I know, like the, it's the railway that's used it, um, cricket. There's men shared they were building, but everybody that's been doing development has already has already been involved, you know, involved with the fund. So I just don't think we need it. Thank you, Councillor. Um, uh, Councillor Johnson. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't going to propose this, but I do have a level of comfort with taking it out of the budget. To be fair, um, it hasn't been used that often. Um, I mean, we did put it in in response to community requests, but uh, it, it, it hasn't really been needed every year. And I think um, so long as we make it clear that uh, if we remove it, then there's always the, op the opportunity for an application, if need be, from a community group, um, then I'm happy to remove it. Because I think, as Councillor Beatty says, otherwise we may be budgeting for it and not needing it, and then that's an unnecessary burden. So I, I will support this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? 
There being none, you don't need to write a reply, do you? No. OK, we're going to vote. It's passed 15 votes for and none against. So, councillors, I'm going to call it a night. I think um, we've got another big train of stuff to go. It, I don't think it's worth getting halfway through that and then bailing. So, thanks for your cooperation today. We're in the we're in the sixes, but I, we've just got to in terms of percentages. So, but it's not gospel yet. So, um, let's just let the staff work on the background about that. Uh, thanks for your cooperation. Thank you to the staff. Um, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 9am. Are we offline?